Hey, I'm Pazuz, and in this video, we're going to be looking at skin collectors who were literally criminals. Believe it or not, there have been quite a few hardcore criminals who have collected CS skins over the years, and in the process, they've created quite a few interesting stories for us. Stories which I'm very, very excited to finally be able to tell. Let's get into things. Now, this video is sponsored by Skinport, the easy to use skins marketplace, which is a miles better way of getting skins than opening cases. Skinport has a bonkers range of skins, 1.8 million of them, available at prices significantly less than what you'd pay on the Steam market. For example, here's a Bowie Tiger Tooth for $488 on the Steam market, and here's the same knife for $345 on Skinport. And best of all, there are no extra fees when you buy a skin. What you see is what you pay, uh, unless you're Australian, lucky me. It's also a really convenient place to sell. Payouts go straight to your bank account, and again, zero extra withdrawal fees when you cash out. And Skinport can also middleman your skins for you as well. The fee on private listings is only 2%. It's also safe and extremely reliable to use, so safe and reliable that it has a 4.9 star Trustpilot rating of 27,000 reviews. So it's a great site, check it out, link is in the description. So on the 8th of July, 2023, Onapixel would make Counter-Strike history when he did a $100,000 case opening with over 250,000 peak viewers. This was a massive win for his sub count. The unboxing itself didn't go so well. He turned $100,000 into about $4,000. But wouldn't it be absolutely insane if it turned out this entire unboxing was funded by the proceeds of crime? Well, so the cases in this opening were donated to Honor by a guy the media described as a skin collector. A skin collector who apparently had about $400,000 of skins. Amongst his collection were beauties such as this, this, and this, and he had a reputation when it came to losing lots of money on Kato capsules. In fact, just a couple of months earlier, he'd opened nine Katowice capsules worth $135,000 on a random Discord server without any explanation whatsoever. So who exactly is this guy? Well, the clue was in his URL. Launch.site is a Rust gambling site owned by a guy called Bbox, and officially at least, B-Box was this rich gambling dude who decided to drop $100,000 on his favorite streamer because, I mean, why not? And at the time, people just kind of accepted this story at its face value. Okay, he's a gambling site owner, he's got money and he doesn't know what to do with it, so why not give $100,000 to Onapixel? Sure, it's retarded, but the skin space has a lot of retarded stuff. This was perfectly believable. However, this entire story would soon proceed to come crashing down, all because of a fateful gambling win. You see, B-Box managed to win $3.9 million on a gambling site called Hype Drop, which was owned by the same guy who runs CSGO Roll, Killian. After making such an incredible win, Hype Drop did what gambling sites do best and immediately locked B-Box's account for verification. Now, at first people assumed this was just bullshit and that Hype Drop just didn't want to pay him out. Rival gambling sites soon came to B-Box's assistance, but despite a lot of public pressure, Hype Drop wouldn't budge for months. So what the hell was actually going on? Well, the first sign something kind of iffy was up was when Killian publicly referred to B-Box as a she. This was a bit of a surprise given B-Box definitely came off strongly as what you'd call a he slash him. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. Now I have this horrible ass luck. Come on now. The people helping B-Box even referred to him that way. So that's a weird inconsistency. What the fuck was actually going on? Well, after almost six months of continual drama, Killian would finally drop the deets. You see, it turned out Hype Drop had gotten a little bit suspicious when B-Box tried to do his KYC with the ID of a teenage girl. On investigation, they'd managed to link his account with a whole bunch of hacking forums, as well as uncovering a metric shit ton of other contradictions in his story. And on top of that, apparently his gambling site, launch.site, had never actually existed in the first place. Now, to be clear, this is all just allegedly. However, 
I can't find any evidence Launch.site was ever a real gambling site, and Bbox's behavior is pretty consistent with someone trying to get rid of stolen crypto. Since then, he's gone private on Twitter and appears to have emptied his Steam account, and I don't think he's ever going to be seeing that $3.9 million again, given Killian abruptly went and shut down Hype Drop. Still, I think it's safe to say that Bbox did at least leave a legacy even if that legacy was getting Honor Pixel to lose $100,000 of stolen money in front of 250,000 people. Anyway, say what you will about Beatbox, at least he wasn't flaunting what he did in front of his alleged victims. The next person we're going to talk about, Aiden Paterski, took a slightly different approach. Basically, this guy styled himself as a self-proclaimed king of crypto, raised $40 million, and then went bankrupt. And by bankrupt, what I mean is that he stole all the money. Pretty standard stuff, let's be honest, but he also had a rather obnoxious habit of flaunting his stolen wealth and shithouse taste in luxury goods on social media. And this flaunting was not very well received by his victims, and one of them proceeded to kidnap him, torture him, and then ransom him for $3 million. Not that Aiden learned his lesson from this, because he went straight back to flaunting on social media again afterwards. And this is a story you've probably heard on CoffeeZilla. And CoffeeZilla's video is a great place for us to start, because in this video, he mentions Aiden was accused of hiding assets. After all, bankrupt people generally don't live multi-million dollar lifestyles. But here's the thing, some of those assets he was hiding were being hidden as CS skins. Aiden Paterski was a massive skins collector. He literally had a Crambit 387 Blue Gem. Here he is showing off his collection to famous intellectual Aiden Ross. And according to Paterski in this TikTok, I've been trading in the game since like 2015, bro. But despite what he says, Aiden was in fact just a giant noob who bought these skins with the money he stole. In fact, he got his 387 Crambit Blue Gem off CS money. Not exactly something you'd expect from a veteran trader. But by late 2023, the noose was really starting to close around Aiden's neck, and he decided to liquidate his skins while he still could. Over a couple of months, he sold them all to an oblivious cash trader called Cinco and used the money to fund an around the world trip. He also deleted his Steam account, given what he was doing was massively illegal and he probably didn't want any evidence left. And that was probably a good idea because not long afterwards, he was arrested. I'm not sure if CS skins are gonna be coming up in his trial, but I am pretty sure he's going to jail for a very long time. Whip bozo. Anyway, the final person we wanna talk about is a guy called Beerus. This is a name that most people won't remember, but at one point he was a very well-known person in the skin scene. Here he is taking part in a giveaway with Zipple. That's pretty legit, right? However, at this point he hasn't been active for about three years. His last tweet was literally XD. And a lot of the replies are very encouraging things like, give the money back, where's the money? And don't drop the soap. His Steam profile also has some interesting comments, comments like this one which says, Thank you for your $60 million donation to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We are the number two cult in the US, but with your generous donation, your honestly earned hard work money, we shall become the number one cult. God bless you, sir. Wow, this guy sounds like an interesting Mormon. I wonder what he gone up to. Well, in 2020, he was a rising star in the Counter-Strike trading scene. Anomaly was complimenting him on how great his deals were. Zippo was joking about how it was all just a build up to an exit scam. And he had a pretty lit inventory. It's hard to know the exact value of what he was holding, but Cisco Exchange shows that he had high tier Dopplers, Dragon Laws, Howls, and Catacrafts, all that good shit. He was a big trader with a big inventory on good terms with the big boys. So how'd he end up in a video about criminals? Well, Beerus wasn't just big into skins. He was also big into crypto. In fact, he was a team member on a project called Anubis. Now, Anubis was one of those dog meme projects people were shitting out back in 2021. This one used, you know, Anubis, and it was pretty successful. It raised $60 million in its first 20 hours. Damn, that's pretty good. Except it was at this point that things started to go a little bit pear-shaped for Anubis. And by pear-shaped, what I mean is that someone immediately stole all of the money. All of it. That's right, they lasted a whole 20 hours. Had a great run. And who was the alleged thief behind this? Well, that was an account called Beerus. 
XD, am I right guys? Now, this has been the subject of a fair bit of controversy. Beerus claimed to have been the victim of a phishing hack. Most people don't believe him, it's rather convenient, right? And at the end of the day, I'm not a crypto expert, I'm not a cybersecurity expert, I can't really analyze this stuff. But what I can reveal is that Beerus is Diamond 5 on the gambling site Stake, which requires you to wager at least half a billion dollars. Wonder where he got that money from? I guess we're never gonna know. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Massively appreciated. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your gut. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.